Hello beauties! Tired of manicures that lose their look after just a couple of days? Today I'll show you a secret weapon for creating a flawless summer French manicure that will delight you for weeks. Juicy pink color, shimmering glitter and an elegant milky shade, all in one design. We'll be using an innovative technique with dual forms and molds. This will allow us to create a perfect arch and a crisp smile line. And you'll also learn how to properly select and install molds. I'll also show you several life hacks that will help you avoid mistakes during nail extensions. And if they've already happened, how to fix everything. Let's not waste a minute. Let's go. I have already done the mechanical preparation and now we're moving on to the chemical preparation. This is one of the most important steps. We thoroughly degrease the nail plate and apply a dehydrator and primer to ensure our coating adheres without any lifting. Many beginner techs and self-taught enthusiasts think the secret to long-lasting nails is all in the base coat. When I first started, I thought the same. But that's not the case, there's no magic base coat. Only understanding the right techniques and how to do things correctly leads to magical results. This time I'm returning to my favorite base coat which works best for my nail plate type. For the base I use a rounded flat brush. These brushes are very convenient for applying base coat to nails. I don't take too much product as the base serves as a foundation for the main material, so we're not doing any alignment in this layer. We apply the material to cover the entire nail plate, making sure there are no empty spots because hard materials will start chipping in areas where there's no base coat. I cure this particular base coat in such a thin layer for 30 seconds and that's enough, but you should follow the instructions on your base coat bottle. If it says 1 minute, then cure it for 1 minute. After curing, I remove the tacky layer and let's select the dual forms and molds. My dual forms are from Fox brand. The molds come in the set and there are three sets here. In each set, the mold size corresponds to the form size. This time, I chose square ones. They have an ideal arch and not a high apex, exactly the kind of forms I've been looking for. Lately, when I'm doing square nail extensions for clients, I only use these forms. When choosing the form, pay special attention to the growth points. They need to be covered and you should choose a size larger than the nail. In other words, first select a form that's the exact size of the nail, but for work, take one size larger. This is because when we apply gel to the form, the difference between the form and the nail will be compensated by the gel. If you choose a form that is the same size or smaller, the nail will end up thin and is more likely to break at the growth points within the first few days of wear. We select molds that are the same size as the form, but if you want the French tips to be not so long, take a mold one size larger than the form. This is a little life hack. How do you attach the mold to the form? First, wipe the molds with a dehydrator and try not to touch the mold with your bare hands afterward. Also, wipe the forms with a dehydrator and apply a thick clear gel or thick base coat. Why do we need to do this if the mold is silicone? In theory, it should fit well into the form without base or gel. But when you start painting the smile line or laying out the French with polygel, any movement of your brush or stick can shift the mold because it's not secured by anything. After coating the form, we install the mold. It's very convenient to do this with an orange stick. Try to remove all the bubbles under the mold and make sure there are none along the smile line. Bubbles can be in the area where we will attach to the nail, but there should be no bubbles along the smile line because they can ruin the smooth drawing. Try not to move the mold back and forth too much because the gel will start to seep out from under the mold and won't adhere properly. In my previous video about reverse French with molds, I set control points on the form, the first where the nail bed should end and the second where the nail should end. But this time I want to do it by eye. We'll see how it turns out. But if you're doing these nails for the first time, it's worth setting the control points. It's easier to navigate and it gives you peace of mind. Once you've placed the insert, Flip the form over and check if it's aligned correctly. If it is, cure it in the lamp for 30 seconds. We move on to the most creative stage. This is the laying out of all kinds of shiny things. 
I want to make this French as summery as possible, so I am using these hexagons in bright pink gel and of course glittery hexagons. They never ruin a reverse French, they only make it more interesting. For the smile line, I used a neon base coat, specifically a base coat and not a color, because it's easier to blend into a gradient. And we'll start with the smile line. With the first pass of a thin brush, we coat the very junction of the mold and form. This will be the clear line. With the next pass, I already add base to make the line super bright and I blend it out. Perhaps you've already seen on the internet, French manicures are gaining popularity now, where the smile line is sort of clear, but there's also a light gradient present. This is the effect I want to achieve because it looks very cool. After drawing, we cure in the lamp for 30 seconds. And now, I add hexagons closer to the smile line and spread them out so that they are evenly distributed. And here's the beauty that is already emerging. We lay out on all the other forms and cures in the lamp for 30 seconds. Sometimes I see comments like, yeah, spend 10 hours on such a manicure only for it to fall off the next day. Honestly, I don't quite understand those commenters. This kind of work takes about the same time as regular nail extensions, maybe 20 minutes longer, and it lasts perfectly. I can easily wear these nails for 3-4 to weeks. When you get a request for a reverse French, discuss all the details with the client in advance. What should be inside, what color, glitter, etc. You can then let the client go for a coffee for 30 minutes while you calmly prepare the inserts. After that, just transfer all this beauty to the nail and that's it. It's awesome. Plus, it's priced much higher than a regular French manicure. I think this is the perfect type of manicure. By the way, the gel that many of you like from previous videos is the Builder Gel from Fox. The color is simply unreal, either pink or raspberry, and it's also a stained glass. It's just a cosmic gel. I transfer a bit of this gel onto the palette and add some dry glitter. I mix everything and transfer it to the form. With a thin brush, I distribute the glitter so that it's evenly placed and visible from all sides. This is important because this glitter looks stunning in the sunlight. I also thought about adding nail art beads or seashells, but decided that would be too much. However, I have a very cool idea on how to play with nail beads in a reverse French. If you want to know, write in the comments and I'll definitely make this video if I see that you're really interested. The more comments and likes, the faster the video will come out. Now, with the same gel, I fill our French and bring our smile to the final result. I will say right away, don't pile too much gel in the whisker zones because when we cure these forms and we'll be joining with the nail, the volume of these whiskers won't allow you to place the form on the nail and empty spaces will form at the growth points, which will then need to be built up with gel. When we've covered with gel and cured, we can already start joining with the natural nail, but today I'll be working with liquid gel, not with thick polygel as usual. Many self-taught and beginner nail techs often have a problem when working with liquid gels, bare growth points. This problem arises from too much pressure on the tip and I have one excellent life hack that will take away this headache from you. With the gel you plan to use for extensions, create stopper drops. These are small but voluminous drops that we place with a thin brush in the stress area and cure in the lamp for 30 seconds. This way, we create the thickness of the future coating. Once these points are polymerized, they become hard and no matter how hard you press the tip onto the nail, they won't let you overpress. This ensures an even gel thickness across the entire nail and the growth points will be covered with hard material. It seems like a simple life hack, but it solves many problems and speeds up the process. And only now do we remove the molds from the form. Do this carefully so as not to tear off all the material you've laid out. Remove the mold with this smooth motion, starting to pull from one edge of the whisker to the other. 
Using a small scraper or an orange stick, remove the material used to attach the mold. Do this carefully without pressing too hard, as the material can be easily torn off. We start filling our nail bed with gel. Do this from the smile line side. This way you'll minimize the occurrence of bubbles in this area. First, we take a small drop, level it out and then add another drop. In the area of the tip where it will connect with the cuticle, leave a gap of 1-2 mm. This is to prevent the gel from squeezing out under the cuticle when attaching the tip. We join with the nail and cure with a UV flashlight for about 10 seconds so that the gel adheres well and holds the form. Otherwise, if the gel isn't cured enough, you'll get a mishap like I did. I didn't hold the flashlight long enough and in the lamp the form lifted, creating this crater. But luckily, this can also be fixed. I'll show you how later. For now, let's attach the remaining nails and cure them in the lamp for one minute. After polymerization, let the gel cool down for about 20-30 seconds before removing the form. As it cools, the gel fixes its shape and then we'll have a good arch. Now for the problematic nail. Using the same small scraper, I cut into the crater to open it up and then use a thin brush to add gel. Yes, we could have filed down this spot with a drill bit and done alignment, but it would take more time, believe me. We fix the flaw and cure it in the lamp. A small bubble formed on my middle finger along the smile line. This happens if you spread the gel too quickly over the form or if there was already a gel with a bubble on the brush and I transferred it to the form. That's why it's important to make sure you don't have such bubbles. Of course you can fix it later, but it's a waste of time. So try to eliminate all imperfections before curing. After curing, I remove the sticky layer and do a surface file and shape filing. Usually, when everything is done correctly, the filing will be minimal. As the dual form already gives us an almost finished nail, you can file using either a nail file or an e-file, but the e-file will be more precise. If you're like me and trim the cuticle before nail extensions, you need to be very careful when working with the file later to avoid injuries. For beginners and self-taught nail techs, I recommend trimming the cuticle after the nail extension and filing, as this will reduce the risk of injury. If a step forms very close to the side walls, use a thin diamond bit with a blue band. A carbide bit isn't as convenient to work with in these areas and there's also a lower risk of injury with a diamond bit. Then, Continue working with the nail file. When filing the lower parallels, pull back the side walls so you can see what you're filing and of course, to avoid overfiling the growth points. When viewed from the side, you should have a straight, clear parallel. The artificial material should seem to continue your natural nail. You shouldn't see a ledge there because the nail will eventually crack in that spot, which can lead to injury. I compare the length of the nails and it turns out my eye is already well trained, so I don't need to set control points on the jewel forms. Remember that the index and ring fingernails should be the same length, the middle finger slightly longer and the pinky accordingly shorter. After filing, I add gel to the cuticle area with a thin brush. You don't need much material there, just enough to even out the nail and the tone of the coverage. This will make it uniform. At first, brush a thin layer of gel to create a wet base. Then we take a drop of material, place it at the cuticle and spread it out. At this stage, don't forget to turn the finger to center the gel. Here, you can see that the ombre effect on the smile line that I wanted has turned out perfectly. I don't think I could have achieved this with a regular color gel. So if you have a neon base, use that for the design. We've evened out the nails with gel and cured them in the lamp for one minute. Now we move on to the final stage, which is applying the top coat. My top coat is from Gamma, the hard series. This means that after curing, it won't be flexible like regular top coats, so it can only be applied to hard materials. Hard top coats usually maintain their shine longer and don't scratch as easily, which makes this top coat special. 
I apply a medium layer and turn the hand to let the top coat level out and create a smooth and beautiful shine. We cure in the lamp for 2 minutes. Don't worry, you won't overcure it. In fact, it's practically impossible to overcure this material and it definitely won't do any harm. Once everything is thoroughly cured, don't rush to apply cuticle oil. Wait a minute for the top coat to cool down before starting any moisturizing steps. This prevents the top coat from becoming cloudy, a little life hack for you. I also have a dry oil from Gamma, which absorbs very quickly and doesn't leave greasy traces like regular oils. This is really cool because you don't have that greasy hands feeling. And here's the French manicure we've created. I think it's a great idea for the summer season. A juicy pink color, glitter and of course a milky shade. In my opinion, the color combination turned out great, but of course, write your opinion in the comments. I strongly recommend watching my other three works with different variations of French manicures. They also contain just as many super useful life hacks, so be sure to watch these videos, they're on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to write comments and hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new and useful information about manicure. I'll say goodbye for now. Bye bye beauties.